Kenny Kasana is the starting shooting guard for the Rwandan national team. He first competed with the national team in the 2009 AfroBasket and has since gone on to represent Rwanda in the 2011, 2013 and 2017 AfroBasket, as well as the 2019 FIBA World Cup African qualifiers. In the last decade, Kenny has also played with several club teams in Africa, such as in Morocco, Egypt and Rwanda. Kenny, thanks for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. Hey Kenny, how you doing? Awesome. I'm good, man. Good. Hey man, um, where you at right now? Uh, I'm in the hotel. We got a little bubble situation going on, uh, but the accommodations are good, so looks just like it. Staying at it. <laughs> looks like it. <laughs> All right, Liz. I think I think they're doing it big for this Afro Basket dish. Gotta love it. Is all yours. Awesome. Well, Kenny, Rwanda is in Group D of the qualifiers with heavyweights Nigeria and a very experienced Mali team. They're now also being joined by the South Sudanese national team. You've had previous experience playing against all these teams. How do you feel about competing against each of these teams? Uh, well, coming into it, I mean, everyone's record is 0-0. Zero, zero. So uh, that's the good point. Uh, obviously, we know Nigeria is, is top of the class right now in uh, African basketball. Uh, so, you know, we got to come come focus, prepare with those guys. Uh, Mali, we, we've had a we played against them twice as well in the last group. Um, we know they're going to be big and physical. And uh, I think they got something to prove. And uh, Sudan as well. I mean, they they're haven't really been on the scene too much lately, but uh, I think they're trying to come and make some noise as well. So. Definitely. I think um, it's going to be a really competitive group, more so than I think people um, will think. And so I'm excited to see how Rwanda as hosts for these qualifiers and even Afro Basket next year go. It's good preparation definitely for you guys, even though you've automatically qualified. Yeah, I mean, I think that's it's a it's a good thing that uh, it takes a little bit of the pressure off, but at the same time, we still want to come out and compete because we know we got to get ready because we want to have a good showing at home as well. So we never want to let the people down. Um, but definitely having the host, being able to host the, uh, the tournament is a big deal around here, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. So how is the national team preparing for these qualifiers that start next week? Uh, well, we've been going twice a day for a while now, uh, making sure the guys are in good condition. I guess that's the most important thing. We don't want to run out of gas come third, fourth quarter. Um, and really just getting up a lot of shots, getting comfortable with the rims. We're playing in the arena, so we want to get familiar with that. And um, like I said, the big thing I think coaches practicing right now is conditioning. Nice. And so um, I see that Coach Vlad has invited a number of rookies to join this team. Obviously, there's veterans like you and Cami, but um, what can you tell us about some of these new guys that we'll be seeing next week? Yeah, I mean, he, he brought in a lot of younger guys, which is, which is good for the experience for them. Uh, get their feet wet a little bit. Because uh, playing in the, you know, in the Afro basket is a whole different kind of competition yeah. compared to local ball like you know you can't get that kind of experience anywhere so uh hopefully these guys are ready um i mean i know you know some of the younger guys well kind of young guys but uh they're also getting ready too so i think i think it's, it's looking good for them nice so you recently participated in the rwanda national league where they hosted the playoffs in a bubble can you tell our audience what to expect from afro the afro basket bubble for next week's games? Yeah, I mean, we uh, we we did the bubble situation. Uh, we were there for about two weeks, maybe a little long. Well, the tournament was about two weeks, but uh, all the teams stayed in the, the same hotel. They, they took all the safety protocols, which was great. I think they wanted to at least have this as a test run to show that they can host the, the qualifiers or the Africa team. Uh, I think it went really well. I mean, for the, the time they had to put it together and, you know, the circumstances. 
I think um, it was, like you said, a great test drive for these upcoming games. And um, I have absolute faith that they'll be able to keep all the players safe, which is great. Facts. Now you're one of the I top- mean, it's not an easy situation, you know, for anyone. Well, that's true. Very true. And you want to be coming into a country and know that your health is the number one um, thing that they're looking after. And um, I know from my previous experience in Rwanda, the Federation and the government do a great job looking after players at these kind of tournaments. Thanks. Now, Kenny, you're one of the top shooting guards in Africa, and that's from season to season, tournament to, to tournament. So how do you maintain that? Uh, I think I just try to take care of my body. Um, you know, I approach pretty much every off season or in season the same way and watch what I intake and, you know, putting in, try not to put too many bad things in my body. But also just staying in shape, I guess. Uh, it's easier to stay in shape than it is to, you know, try to get back in shape. And I think that's been my mindset all along. Uh, just don't slow down. Great advice for the uh, younger viewers. So, Kenny, because you've played in numerous Afrobasket tournaments, qualifiers, and also for club teams, in your opinion, how has the game developed and improved in Africa over the last decade? I think it's taken leaps and bounds, honestly. I mean, you see how many players were just drafted just from Nigeria alone you know, a couple of days ago in the NBA draft, it's just putting a spotlight on on Africa as well. I mean, the MVP, Giannis was, you know, African origins. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many guys and now they're able to see that. I mean, got the, the NBA ball competition coming. That'll put a spotlight on the local guys. Uh, I mean, so it's only, it's only going up from here. I, I'm excited to have the rest of the world finally paying attention to what's happening in Africa. And like you said, I think BAL is really going to bring a spotlight and um, we're going to see a lot more people wanting to play in Africa. For sure. Now, with your experience in Africa, who have been some of the toughest players you've had to face and which team in particular do you enjoy competing against? Um, I mean, all the big dogs for sure. I mean, we've had some, some games against Tunisia, obviously Nigeria. Um, I enjoy playing the games like uh, Morocco, Egypt, some of those guys, my ex-teammates. It's always a pleasure playing against them. And I mean, you always want to play against the best guys. So, you know, whenever you can match up against some of those guys, it's always an honor. Because uh, we got, got some of the best, better players. Uh, in the world, you know, when you speak of Africa, when you're in and I, okay, Kenny, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Cool. Thought we just lost you there for a second, but that's all good. Um, now, Rwanda, in terms of gender equality, is actually one of the leading countries in the world. We've seen that they have over 50% of uh, ministers in parliament are women. How, do you think this is translated to their basketball? Um, I mean, I think it's all good to be uh, uh, in the fourth, I don't see why you will platforms. Uh, so, I mean, I hope they continue with this. I mean, you see it happening a lot in the US and uh, hopefully other countries will follow. Nice. Now, Karabani, I know you are the hard hitting question person. So let's bring you back. Kenny, I hope you're ready. Hey, Kenny. I am back. All right. So, Kenny, I, I was listening. Yeah, what's up, my guy? I was listening in the background and uh, I know you're really polished when it comes to actually doing these things, interviews and all that. And I'm sure you've done a lot of them. So the way you answer some of your questions, they're kind of nice, you know, in the formal settings. So I'm going to take you, I'm going to bring you to the streets. All right. The streets of Africa here. The way we do things slightly different. All right. All right. So 
One thing, she asked you about who do you like playing against? What teams and um, what player? And you kind of like danced around a little bit. Can we get into Specific. that a little more? Yeah, I, I, we want to hear it. Come on, man. Who do you like going up against? Who do you like matching up against? I want to hear that. I mean, I mean, I take every game the same way. I mean, honestly, like, but if I had to say, like, I, I like playing against me. My guy Ben Uzo, you know, I always get a pleasure playing against him. Uh, Arm Gindi from Egypt's always a tough matchup. Uh, the guy Max from from Kuh, obviously he has a lot of experience and he knows how to play the game. Uh, just a couple off the top of my head. I mean, I agree. They're all great, great players, matchups so. for you. They're all great matchups for you, though. Okay, nice, nice. All right, then I I'm going to slide in another question right there. Somewhat similar. Who is the best player in Africa? That's a tough question. Uh, <laughs> like, actually playing in Africa, from Africa, like, I mean. Okay, playing so guys, in Africa, man. playing in Africa, All right? Playing in Africa. Not from Africa, playing in the NBA like the Giannis right. and them. No, 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 no. Like the Joel Embiid playing in Africa. Right. I told you he was going to put you on the spot. I'm going to have to sit that one out. I'm going to have to sit that question out. <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just to give you a heads up, nearly everyone has said Carlos Marias. Yeah, he's definitely tough. But is he? Do you think he is? Would you? Would you say he is the well, best? Well, I mean, he 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 play he plays in and out of Africa, though, right? Like, I mean, sometimes he's in Europe well, and sometimes. Well, he's yeah, here. yeah, but he does play in Africa. That's what I meant. Anybody that actually plays in Africa, even if you do come just for one tournament and then you leave, you still play in Africa. Those are the people. We can't put Giannis in there. He doesn't play in Africa. We can't put Joel Embiid in there. He doesn't play in Africa. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, Carlos is definitely one of the top players in Africa, for sure. I mean, that's that's undisputed. Uh, but you don't think I mean, he is the best? I mean, I, I mean, there's a lot of guys that are considered the best players. So, I mean, I, just to I say get one it. Guy, I right? get it, Kenny. Kenny, come on. Help me out here. I'm asking you a direct <laughs> question. Can you give me I'm, a I'm, direct look, answer? Is he or not, is he I'm not? not? I'm making lists. I'm not into this. I just play the game, man. Alright, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. We're not gonna keep pushing that. Okay, alright. Since you wouldn't say the best, would you give me your top five list? Top African teams. Teams. Teams, yes. The top five teams? Top five teams. Yep. Um I mean Nigeria. Okay. Is that, is that number one? one uh, we, we are we going from one I, to five or five? I to mean, one? it could it 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 could vary basket. I mean, but talent wise, they definitely have a, a good crop of players. Uh, Tunisia's always been solid. Okay. Okay. Stop. Um, stop right there. Stop right there. T stop right there. Let me elaborate my question one more time. I would like you to tell me the top teams, not the top talent. The top teams as a team collectively, the best team all the way to the fifth best. Well, okay, we'll say Nigeria, maybe not in any order, but Nigeria, Tunisia, Angola, Senegal, and I mean, maybe that fifth slot is up for grabs. I'm, I agree. It could, be, it could be an Egypt, it could be a, a Morocco, it could be. Uh, now, Kenny, uh, ID Coast for sure. Cameroon. Take your pick. Cameroon, take your pick. Oh, yeah. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, Coach Liz, why are you always sliding Cameroon in there? Every time you keep pushing that team in there whenever somebody's answering. Are they <laughs> well, think about you? it. No, no, think about it, right? <laughs> Coach of Wire only got through to the World Cup last year on some dodgy dealing with Nigeria, and Cameroon was pretty much deserving of that fifth spot. So it can't be argued. Well, uh, I mean, yeah. Coast came to play. They came to play in that tournament. <laughs> to beat Nigeria by 27 points, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> so, but Kenny, turning this into Rwanda, what do you think 
Rwanda has to do to crack into that like top five? I think we just got to keep developing. I mean, you you see other countries and they have a lot of guys that are that are coming coming in. You know what I mean? And we're we're trying to get guys out. And so now we've got a lot of a lot of guys that are going and playing Division One basketball and and you know playing outside the country, which is is the first step. You know what I mean? So getting that international experience is, is huge. You know, whereas you got some teams they'll have. 11 professional players you know what i mean and then you got some countries that have four or three you know what i mean so i think the first step is the development and and they're obviously making strides towards that uh the basketball people are, are excited and eager to see what's going to happen i mean they're building stadiums they're they're bringing events here and, and they're trying to get the youth involved in, and i think that's the right direction definitely definitely all right, so Kenny, uh, going back to what we're talking about, I know you said something that I really, um, I, I wanted to know a little more about. You talked about how you approach your off season. That's how you stay in shape. You stay in the, uh, in, the, <clears throat> in the, in the elite level form or shape. So how do you approach your off season? Uh, I mean, you know, just like any basketball player, we work, we're constantly working out, we try to get at least one in per day two sometimes uh i stay with a group of guys that are you know that are striving for the same thing as well you know we're, we're working out we're, we're playing we're pushing each other uh dieting like you know taking care of the body i can't i can't train the same way i was 24 or 25 but uh just gotta work smarter not harder sometimes uh stretching <laughs> uh you know, and just and more body maintenance, like as far as weightlifting, not trying to lift too heavy, but lifting enough to to maintain function. You know. Okay. All and right. Kenny, in your off season, do you do any other sports, or is it still your still basketball and say the gym? Yeah. Well, so I, I play a lot of soccer with my daughter when I'm home. Uh, so that's kind of our football. I don't know what you guys call it there, but you know. we got you. So, so I, I, I've taken a likeness to that. Uh, I mean, I run a lot. I like to run. I'm, I, I don't know, but outside of you know those two, that's pretty much where I keep it at. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so uh, going back, I heard you say something about you know top of the class, and you had Nigeria as being top of the class. Why do you consider Nigeria to be top of the class? Well, I mean, they, they took the crown last time. So until someone knocks them off the throne, that's that's theirs to, uh, you know, to hold they on have to. The, they have the number one FIBA ranking, but mm -hmm. Tunisia are Afrobasket defending champions. So that kind of rivalry is what we're all excited to see. <laughs> Right. Yeah, okay. I mean it's definitely gonna be a good game. Yeah, but okay, I wanna, I, 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 I would like to get more insight. Why do you feel? Is it just because they won last time and that's it? Because you look at a, a lot of these national teams, it's teams change. Like you look at Nigeria right now, it's a whole lot of different players and all that. It's a totally different team. They got a, a totally different, uh, a new head coach and all that, Mike Brown. So it's a different team, even though they do have a lot of talent. Well. I do think that we should consider chemistry and all and all that. So I wanted to hear it from you, from you, Kenny. Sure. Why are you putting Nigeria at the top of the class? Well, I mean, just like you said, there's a lot of changes, a lot of new faces for for a lot of these teams. I mean, yeah. Uh, but not many teams have the luxury of saying, okay, we can swap twelve totally new players and still be competitive for you know the top spot. Okay, so it's the talent, the talent. They definitely have the talent, right? Well, for sure. I mean, like you said, the chemistry matters too, as well, because that like teams such as like an Angola, a Tunisia, those guys have obviously been playing together a long time, so that makes a world of difference come game time. But I mean, if you swap twelve guys out or ten guys out, I mean, you know, it that's might be a luxury that situation. Right. And I'm and, and, and sorry, Kenny, I'm still going to stick to Nigeria a little bit there. All right. 
So Nigeria, we had Ike, the captain. He was here and um, he told us that he considers Nigeria to be top five in the world, not just in Africa. Uh, do you believe the talent that they have from what you're saying, your inside, do you believe they're top five in the world? Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, talent wise, they, they definitely are one of the better, better countries up there. But, uh, I mean, there's so many, so many great teams out there. I mean, it's hard to say. Okay. So coming back to Rwanda, all right, where would you put Rwanda top what? I mean, our goal is always try to be top eight for sure. Get in that quarterfinal game. Uh, I mean, we always compete. Every every time we're on the court, we compete. I don't think it's a, it's a situation where we lay down. I think we try to ha hang our hats on that and try to get better each tournament. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully we'll come out here and, and, and do the same. I mean, but definitely we want to be top eight in Africa. That's that's our goal coming in every place. Okay, and would that mean you have a better talent, or is it just better team? chemistry what are you lacking right now what do you think you need to work on to get a top eight uh i think it's more the experience in the game you know like you said we got a lot of younger guys coming in so like that that experience is, is, is it isn't cheap you know what i mean you got to take your bumps and your bruises right and, and a lot of guys don't have that yet but also comes with you know with the, with the chemistry as well. I mean, it's hard it's hard to do when you got guys coming from different places and then you you try to come together for two weeks or three weeks and, and you know and play a tournament and compete with the top teams in Africa, uh, especially under these circumstances right now. So okay, it's it's funny things that look a little better. Right, it's funny. I was actually I, I was hoping you would say something about coaching. I kind of like slid in there, Mike Brown and all that. I spoke a little bit about coaching because it seems like usually that's one of the most consistent thing. Thing usually players change in a lot in, in in a lot of teams. You see that in a lot of teams. Your coaching staff or your head coach, and I'm sure Liz, you you coach Kenny, right? right? If I'm correct, right? I had the pleasure. I had the pleasure. Okay, Ooh. let's start. Let's start. Let's start with Coach Liz right here. How was uh, Coach Liz? Because I, you uh, know, Coach I, Liz was right. Coach Liz was dope. I mean, she uh, mm -hmm. she came to work every day with the same approach. I mean, she was doing the most. She was going up and beyond, like everything that she probably even needed to do. Uh, I mean, she was coming with clips and all kind of numbers, and she had a lot of people like, "Oh, wait, she needs to back up a little bit." <laughs> <laughs> I've been prepared. Okay, nah, so that's that's never a bad thing, though, you know. All right, all right. So, all right. What about your coaching staff in Rwanda? What do you think of it? Do you think they have what it takes to get you guys to top eight? Matter of fact, all the way to top five. I mean, I sure hope so. I mean, we, we've had Coach Vladimir here for, for a couple years now. So the guys are, are they know what what is expected of them from him uh, and his, his coaching style, you know, which is unique in its own way. Uh, we have uh, Coach Henry that just joined us. Uh, he's been on the local scene here for a while now and won a couple of local championships. Well, not a couple, a few local championships. So, so he's really respected with the guys and he has a, you know, he has a pulse on what's going on here and as far as, and coach Kareem as well. So, uh, I think, I think they're hitting it from all angles. I mean, you get the, the European perspective from, uh, Vladimir and, and showing these guys a different way of, uh, playing ball also with the, with the local coaches that, that know exactly how to get to these guys. So, um, as far as that, that, I think they're, they're doing a good job. I mean, we just got to make sure it translates come game time. Okay. I 100% agree, Kenny. I think you guys actually have one of the most balanced uh, balanced coaching staff across any national team. Nice. Nice. I hope nice. so. Nice. They're just, missing, they're just missing one person. <laughs> <laughs> right, Coach right. Liz, right? All right. So, Kenny, um, how does Rwanda feel about the team's chances in this year's Afro Basket? How do they feel? Do they feel like you guys have a chance? I mean, what's the pulse like? I mean, I, the, def, the the support is definitely there. Uh, everyone's rooting for us. I mean, it's kind of unfortunate that we, we get to host it. I'm not sure what's going to happen in the summer, 
hopefully things get a little back to normal. But uh, I mean, Liz can attest to it. I mean, even for some of the local games, we, we'd have the stadium 10,000 people packed. And that is, you know, uh, ultimate com- confidence booster for a lot, a lot of guys here. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of wish that we were able to, to do that. But um, I mean, the support is still there. Everyone, everyone's rooting for us and they want to see us do well. Good, good. Coach Liz, you got more questions? Uh, I was just actually going to say, Kenny, if for people who haven't watched, you know, Afro basket before, how would you describe how Rwanda plays? We try to play with a little pace, use our, our shooting to our uh, advantage. Uh, We'll mix it up, man. Zone a little bit, and uh, and try. And, and I mean, we're we're one of we're, we're we're somewhat skilled, so we try to try to use that to our advantage as well, and 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 keep the pace. Now between qualifiers and Afro Basket 2021, could you say that Rwanda is a bit of a dark horse leading into that tournament? You guys could maybe cause some upsets. That's definitely the plan. <laughs> Fly under the radar, right? Right. <laughs> nice, nice. So, we, we've been speaking to a lot of other players and, you know, some of these teams have are talking about the World Cup 2023 and, you know, bypass, they've already considered they're going to win Afro. I like the confidence. <laughs> um, but in terms of, you know, what you've seen Rwanda play in 2009 when you first played the, with the team to now, what do you think has been the major difference? Is it, um, I know you spoke a little bit about, you know, more talented players. Has it been federation support, fan support, um, or, you know, uh, better coaching? What do you think has contributed to, to the development of the national team? I could say it's a little bit of all that. Um, for sure, the federation, the government has uh, been doing the most to put us in a position to to succeed. Uh, you know, going out, like I said, getting in the stadium, doing these type of things is it's not really heard of. You know, these days. Uh, sure. Coaching, coaching has has gotten better. I mean, we're we're bringing some some outside talent in as well. Uh, we're getting guys going to school and trying to bring them back, get up, get them incorporated. Uh, I mean, it's, I mean, from ten years from from right, I mean, ten years ago from now, it was it was a totally different story. I mean, you know, some of the things we had to go through, and it's just a testament to how staying persistent and and, and wanting to get better is, is, is the goal. And they've done a great job at it. So, so Kenny, Kenny, oh, sorry, you go, Carabani. All right, Kenny, do you play in the league in Rwanda? Um, yeah, well, I came, I came and finished up the playoffs with them this past, uh, December or what is it? Uh, not, I don't know. It was month. October. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, all these, it's all feeling the same right now, to be honest. Right. Uh, and then, and then also, yeah, I, so I had played with the local team in the uh, ball qualifiers, uh, with Liz. That was December. And, last year. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. So. So okay, kind of taking it one month at a time now. All right, actually, that's that's the question. I wanted. Okay, can you can you actually elaborate on that? Do you actually play throughout the whole season, or is it when they advance to like a certain tournament? That's when you come in as a hired gun. <laughs> I mean, if you put it that way, he's a, he's uh, a hired yeah. gun worth having. <laughs> yeah, so but as of lately, I. I I've been coming. I've been coming for the uh, the qualifier groups and you know the the, so you're the higher stage groups. Yeah, you're a merc. <laughs> if that's the way you want to put it. <laughs> but he, Kenny has played in leagues in like Egypt and Morocco, where he's played four seasons. Okay. Right. Right. All right. Would you ever go to Rwanda? Would you ever stay in Rwanda to play the full season? Do you see yourself doing that? Uh, I mean. I would, I could see myself doing it. I mean, at this age now, so I mean, I don't have many more seasons left. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, Kenny's going to come back as a coach. Can, <laughs> I wouldn't mind that either. So definitely, it's too, it's to be determined. 
<laughs> all right all right so uh um kenny we usually do this at some point we give our guests a chance to sell their countries to the rest of the world well to all our viewers this is your chance to sell rwanda sell it we're a hard working team no not the we team the, the country the country the country sell your country oh. to the world oh. why we should come to rwanda why should we come to kugali oh it's a beautiful place one of the safest places you can be in africa the people are very hospitable you'll have a great time the food is good the culture is great the weather is always it's nice to rain a little but it's never too hot it's never too cold oh, oh. I mean, it's just it's just one of the nicer places to be in africa yeah uh, Kenny, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that one more time? We had that, that phone coming in, and then oh, I cut. Hold on, yeah. They, 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 they telling me I got to go to practice. Okay. <laughs> all right. We got a, we got we got practice coming up. That's why they're calling me. Oh, okay. okay. We'll, so you we'll go wrap right it up now, after right? this. Kenny, can you just I'll, answer yeah, that right question? Now. Yeah, just that quest question, and then you can go, I guess about the uh sell the people in rwanda yes please yeah. start from the top yeah i was just saying that uh it's one of it's one of the nicest places to be in africa uh the country's beautiful the hills are beautiful the weather is nice it's never too hot it's never too cold the people are hospitable they'll show you a good time I mean, as far as culture goes, it's, it's one of it's one of the most cultured places in East Africa. Um, I, I've never heard anyone come here and not have anything good to say about it. Um, it's just ultimately a good a good experience, and and hopefully, once he, once people come and for the tournaments, they can say the same thing. Definitely one of my favorite places in Africa. Yeah, I, I, I love sure. Rwanda. I got to say, I love it too. All right, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all having me. Thanks, Kenny. It was great to chat. Uh, hopefully we get to work together again one day. And Kenny, all the best of luck. I hope you guys do crack past the top eight and all the way to top five. I think you guys got a pretty good team and you have a chance of doing that, man. I appreciate it. Enjoy practice. <laughs> all right. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.